first off, why don't we just start with Community 204 mm -hmm. and, and what it is and, and what you guys do. So basically, Community 204 is a platform made up of, of individuals with significant live life experience in a variety of systems whether it's child and family, justice, marginalization, and it's a way for them to help support the marginalized community by providing basic needs and support in a variety of capacities, uh, you know, just based on what we like to call lateral empathy. So why did you want to start this? I mean, you've worked with so many different organizations and you're also part of the Saba Peace Walkers. Mm -hmm. or like, so why did you want to sort of start your own little thing? Well, we've been doing this work under the guidance of Mitch Bourbonnet for years, but uh, when the pandemic hit, we really noticed that the effects of poverty and, and marginalization were severely compounded and, and a lot of resources that folks were used to were shutting down due to provincial restrictions. Um, I myself am a lifetime product of the child family welfare system, so I know how it feels to desire to belong to something, to seek affirmation, validation but also to be in the position of those needing support and so the kids that I work with often feel the same way and we figured what can we do to give back to the folks that need something uh, we have a slogan called helping is healing helping is medicine and when we give back to those folks we do get a sense of self-fulfillment and and we feel great about ourselves but but also engaging with folks that we might not have had opportunities to do so otherwise so that was kind of how that ball got rolling. So it's, it sounds like you and, and some of the volunteers you work with have a bit of lived experience as well in the area. How important is that when you're going about the community and, and trying to do some of the work that you're doing? I think it allows for us to establish relationships and positive rapport a lot more easily and effectively. Uh, oftentimes folks kind of resonate with other individuals who kind of look like them or may have come from similar circumstances. It's, it's a lot easier to form that sense of empathy and compassion, but also to get a sense of someone's intentions when you know they've been there. Mm -hmm. And at the start of the show, I mean, we just saw some of the statistics that I was talking about. Um, when you hear some of those stats, and it seems like every year they either get worse or stay the same, I mean, what kind of goes through your mind and, and why do you think these numbers are the way they are? It, I, it shows a concern for me and it, it, all, it obviously screams the fact that change needs to happen. It, it, it allows you to see that what's been going on right now isn't working as, as good as it should. And it also kind of sheds light on the fact that we have to start seeking ulterior options and, and, and thinking outside of the box perhaps and, and shifting the way things are done to meet the needs of the people. So then on the flip side of that, what are some of these things that can be done to help change those numbers and change the narrative a bit in terms of what's happening? I think there needs to be more focus on some of the grassroots organizations that are heavily immersed in the front lines. They're the ones that are there for the right reasons. They're the ones that are least supported in supporting others. Uh, they're the ones whose heart lie in this work and they're the ones whose work has been proven to be deeply effective. Um, I, you know, a lot of these folks have limited access to resources and they're apprehensive on trusting programs and things like that because there's been inconsistencies. So, you know, the grassroots organizations have just always been there doing that work. And mm -hmm. so through that, you've established trust, you've established honesty, you've established integrity, and that allows those folks to really trust your vision for, for what they can and can't accomplish, you know, even uh, systemically. You know, navigating systems is super hard. The loopholes are unreal. It's almost like a, a battle you can't win. And then when you already go into something feeling defeated, yeah. it's super hard to envision yourself uh, coming out of the circumstances that you're in. So are we talking more funding, more of these organizations? Like what, what, what exactly are we talking yeah, about? Yeah, you know, in my personal opinion, what I've been able to do with my group with no funding, running completely out of pocket has been tremendous. And I can only imagine the milestones that I could reach and the demographic I could extend to had I had that financial support. And I think the same can be said for groups like Sabe Peace Walkers. We have DCSP out there doing tremendous work too. Um, but we're only we're, we're fairly limited in that sense. But uh, you know, any kind of support with that groundwork, you know, you know, it, it would go would go a long way. And it seems like, uh, at least here in Winnipeg, and I'm sure across the country, it's sort of the same. There there seems to be more of these groups popping up and more people wanting to take action. Um, I mean, you you started your own after working with numerous organizations, and there are still these organizations. Is it? encouraging for you to sort of see people wanting to make change and wanting to sort of take things upon themselves and, and yeah, do this? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think that speaks to the fact that people are starting to see these gaps and they want to alleviate those gaps and, and mitigate some of the experiences that folks are dealing with. I think the fact that things are popping up organically speaks to a desire to give back to others. And, uh, you know, we really believe in something called lateral unity. So, so there's no ego in anything that we do. There's, 
you're helping in this way, you have this skill set, we have this skill set, you can reach this, we can reach this, let's come together and, and reach more collectively. Mm -hmm. I think there needs to be more of that um, because the need continues to increase. So then if somebody's watching this and they're, they've always thought about maybe joining uh, one of these groups or maybe trying to start their own, what sort of advice would you have? I mean, you, you started sort of from the ground up with, with the work and mm -hmm. you've been doing this for a really long time now. So do you have any advice on maybe how somebody can get involved in, in trying to do something like this? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think our city has been tremendous in, in having a desire to help, but they don't always know how. And they don't know, you know, you don't always have to create your own platform, but you can utilize existing ones. We've had some tremendous groups that have been existing for a long time doing what we call heart work. You know, an example is Mama Bear Clan. Uh, Community 204, we all utilize social media. That's kind of the trend nowadays to get your message and spread that awareness. Right. You know, join those groups and kind of recognize the call outs that they put. You know, j join in on things, join in on activism. Um, you know, realize that helping someone doesn't require much from you. Sometimes it's just time, sometimes it's effort. You know, even financially, we're able to feed 200 folks with. $70, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's so, the, it, it's not out of the realm of possibility to give back. You just gotta find those routes and, and kind of take that first step. Well, so, so then I wanna get into that a little bit is how do you do it, you said basically next to no funding, like yeah. how, how do you specifically do that and, and have success? Uh, so originally what I had done is I was just doing it out of pocket, just the need was there and, mm -hmm. and it just, it, you know, it allowed me to engage with people. I think the pandemic created a divisiveness across the world and so for me I needed that connection. Uh, the youth that I work with also long for that connection. So I just did that, just out of pocket. Right. Down the road, once we created social media and stuff, that's when we had the capacity to start accepting you know, uh, help from other people, whether it's local business businesses, uh, we have Community Helpers Unite and Leftovers, and they, they kind of had food products that they really needed to, to use before they were no good, right. um, so we didn't want to waste that. So we started collaborating with other existing groups. We have the Brotherhood that joins us as well, and it gives them an opportunity to start working on independent living skills, cooking, uh, how, to, how to be reasonable with your spending. You know, a soup is a, a hearty meal, mm -hmm. and so all these things, all these pieces to this moving puzzle just came together really, really organically. So it spoke both to the need, but also the desire of, of folks wanting to help. Yeah, well, that sounds like amazing work, and it sounds like it's something that's super simple that can be done right across the country, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, just with your Community 204, are you able to sort of give us any plans on what you guys are going to be doing in the future, whether that be short term or long term, just a little bit more about yeah. Community 204? Yeah, so we recently, because like our, our services extend beyond just providing food and stuff, like we were recently able to secure uh, an enclosed trailer, so through that we've been able to provide folks living with financial barriers, physical limitations, with residency relocation. Not only that, but it's allowed us to connect with folks in the community to retrieve uh, furniture provisions and redistribute those to folks who are getting back on their feet, who are finding sobriety, who have secured housing, and they're leaving that negative cycle and starting that positive cycle. We've been able to provide them with furniture so that they, their house becomes a home. Mm -hmm. Right, and so that's been a beautiful blessing that we've been able to do, and, and we're hoping to continue to, to grow. We utilize the Thunderbird House, right. which is a cultural pinnacle in our city. It's a building that needs life in it, so we've been honored to be able to bring that life back to the building to give back to the folks. Um, so we're just hoping to, to be able to continue the work that we're doing, but also find ways to, to reach out to others and, and get more involved. And lastly, before we let you go here, Daniel, I mean, where do you see sort of this situation with those that are unhoused and, and across Canada and in, in, in Winnipeg. I mean, where do you see this going in the near future? And, and Well, I, I think with organizations like and homelessness really trying to tackle the, the increases and, and buildings opening up like Nadinaway Mac, which is also known as our relatives, has been crucial in addressing the, the, the issue. And I think that they're developing plans long term to help mitigate those numbers and address some underlying issues that might have been overlooked in the past. Um, and then just other groups coming to fruition to help people navigate those systems and, and learn what kind of resources and supports they're actually entitled to. I think all of those things in combination will definitely help bring some of those numbers down. Mm -hmm. And then just an overall community understanding of the effects of, of mental illness and the severity behind that, yeah. as well as like just how devastating and, and dis destructive uh, substance abuse is as well. Those, those things, all those things in combination, addressing those issues will really help uh, us find a way to, to remedy them. 
Well, we'll have to leave the, the conversation there for now. Daniel, I want to say thank you so much for coming in and sharing a bit of what you do. And um, it's just incredible work that you and, and Community 204 and all the other groups do. So thank you so much for coming in and joining us. Uh, no worries. It's my pleasure. Thank you.